November 9th, 2017. Put your mic down. Oh. Better? Okay. The November 9th, 2017 Greater Dayton RTA Board of Trustees Public Board Meeting is hereby called to order. Would you please stand and salute the flag? Of America and, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Would you call the roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hurd? Here. Ms. Hairston? Here. Mr. Corrado? Mr. Hogie? Here. Present. Mr. Lumpkin? Here. Mr. Wetrisser? Here. And Mr. Williamson? Here. Okay. Thank you. We do have a quorum. We can conduct business. The, uh, on the, let's go right down to approval of the consent agenda. We will take the administrative of oath of office when Ms. Stinson arrives. Okay. So, uh, board members, you have the agenda in front of you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and second. Any comments, adjustments, or corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor of the approved agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. The um, agenda has been approved. First item on the agenda is the approval of the October 3rd, 2017 board minutes. These minutes were distributed to everyone in advance of this meeting. At this time, I'll ask if there are any questions, adjustments, or corrections. Is there a need to have the minutes read at this meeting? Okay. Hearing no questions, corrections, or adjustments, I declare the minutes accepted as previously reviewed. Next, we have committee reports. Mr. Lumpkin, the Finance and Personnel Committee. Thank you, Madam President. The Finance Person <coughs> Personnel Planning Committee is met for a jointly held meeting on October 17th, and as a result of the committee is recommending nine action items for the board's consideration. Action item number two, Marsha McLennan Insurance Agency quotes. At our meeting, Mr. Mark Reynolds and Ms. Carrie Sanders of the Marshall McLennan Insurance Agency provided a description of RTA insurance coverage. Mr. Reynolds discussed fees, commissions, and trends that affect RTA's insurance coverage and premiums. Mr. Reynolds highlighted premium summaries <clears throat> for property flood, earthquake, property terrorism, and commercial auto premiums. Mr. Reynolds and Ms. Sanders presented a total cost of risk analysis and the history of RTA out-of-pocket expenses. And the supporting information is included in today's board package. Mr. Reynolds and Ms. Mary Stanforth are available to answer any questions that the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to award a contract to Marsha McClendon Insurance for the coverage year December 1, 2017 through November 30th, 2018. The coverage will include terms as included in today's board packet unless a more cost-effective package becomes available prior to December 1, 2017. The grand total cost remains at $1.6 million, which is equal to the 2016-2017 coverage year. Some flexibility is necessary, and it is not uncommon for insurance companies to continue competing for a contract up until the actual date the coverage is to begin. This procurement will be funded with 100% operating funds. Is there a second? Second. Okay. It's been properly moved and second that we um, give a authorization to bind insurance coverage through the Marsh McClendon Insurance Agency for the coverage year December 1, 2017 through November 30th, 2018. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none. Action item two. Madam President, I have to abstain because I have a conflict. Okay. Action item two has uh, been accepted, and please note there was one abstention. Okay. Action item three. Action item number three, administrative employee and compensation guide. 
Greater Dayton RTA is seeking to update its uh, administrative employee compensation guide. The request is a consent with RTA's mission to be a premier public transportation provider and encompasses the core values of stewardship and our people. With previous approval from the RTA Board of Trustees, staff engaged in the service of effective resources <coughs> of Knoxville, Tennessee, to review the current RTA guidelines, analyze comparable organizations, and recommend any appropriate changes for the updated plan. Mr. Donaghy provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and he is available now to answer any questions that the board may have. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve the Greater Dayton RTA's proposed 2017 salary guide. I'll second that. It has been properly moved and seconded. We approve the uh, salary guide. Questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. The, um, the administrative staff planning pay guide has been approved. Action item number four, diesel coaches option. In January 2016, the RTA board approved a multi-year purchase of up to five years of diesel coaches. The original contract was approved for up to 90 coaches, including anticipated technical enhancements for a total cost of $42.3 million. Board approval was also received for up to 67 option year coaches at the cost of $31.8 million for an estimated grand total of $74.1 million. In September of 2016, the RTA received authorization from the board to work within the previously approved amount of $42.3 million for the purchase of up to 94 diesel coaches from Gilly. In September 2017, RTA exercised option year two for 14 40 foot diesel coaches and four 30 foot diesel coaches. Within the past months, RTA received official notice from the Ohio Department of Transportation regarding a new award of funds for 14 40-foot diesel coaches. At this time, staff requests an increase to the current order by 10 40-foot coaches. Mr. Darren Brown provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in today's board package. Mr. Brown is available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to approve staff's request to increase the current order of 40-foot low floor diesel coaches by 10 to 24 40-foot diesel coaches and four 30-foot low floor diesel coaches for a total of $12,712,560 plus a 5% allowance of $635,628 for enrichments at a total estimated cost of $13,348,188. I'll second that motion. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that we increase the current order of diesel buses. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We will be increasing our order of diesel coaches. At this time, I would like to pause in the agenda and go back up to item number four, the administration of oath of office. Is that okay with you, Mr. Lumpkin? That is fine. I will yield the floor. Okay. Ms. Stinson, if you'll... Yeah. You can go out that way. I have great responsibility. If she doesn't get sworn in, she can't conduct her job today. <laughs> Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <laughs> Old friends. Yes, I've known Belinda for a long time, so I'm especially proud to be able to swear her in. Belinda, would you raise your right hand, please? Repeat after me. I, Belinda Matthew Stinson. I, Belinda Matthew Stinson. Will honestly and faithfully and impartially perform the duties of my office. Will honestly, faithfully, and impartially perform the duties of my office. I will not be personally interested directly or indirectly. I will not be personally interested directly or indirectly in any contract let by the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority. In any contract let by the Greater Dayton Regional Transit Authority. 
and will uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America. And will uphold the laws and constitution of the United States of America. And the great state of Ohio. And the great state of Ohio. Welcome to the board. Thank you. Okay, we're now at action item four, pest control services. Oh, yes, five. Um, five, five action, I'm sorry. Action item number five, five, pest control services. Purpose of this procurement is to purchase pest control services for all RTA facilities and vehicles. This project is consistent with our core values of safety and quality of service, and staff works continuously to provide a pest-free environment for customers and employees. The vendor is required to provide a pest control services on a monthly <clears throat> on a monthly and as needed basis. Small purchases procedures were used to procure these services previously. Terminix International is RTA's current vendor. Mr. Brown provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting and he's available now to answer any questions the board may have. Hearing none, based on the recommendation of the committee, I move to award a contract to Terminix International for pest control services in the amount of $120,362, an estimated $43,130 for additional service calls for a five-year contract period for a grand total estimated amount of $163,492. This procurement will be funded with 100% operating funds. And we'll keep raccoons away. Is there a second? Second. Okay, it's been promptly moved and seconded that we award a pest control services contract to Terminex International. Are there any other questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We are awarding a contract to Terminex International for pest control services. Action item number six, transmission parts. The purpose of this procurement is to purchase transmission parts for the Greater Dayton RTA Voith Transmissions. Voith Transmissions parts are used in a routine basis by the maintenance department to ensure the proper maintenance of the fleet. This project is consistent with RTA's core values of stewardship as staff continues to assure the effective and efficient use of agency resources. Mr. Brown provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and he's available for any questions that the board may have. Hearing none, based on the recommendation of the committee, I move to award a contract to Cummins Incorporated for the purchase of transmission parts for a base year amount of $141,020. It is also recommended that $145,250 be awarded for option year one and $149,608 be awarded for option year two for a grand total award of $435,878. I'll second that. Okay, it has been properly moved and seconded that we award a contract to Cummins Incorporated for transmission parts. Are there any other questions or comments? All those in favor say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. We have uh, awarded a contract for transmission parts to Cummins Incorporated. <clears throat> action item number seven, revised procurement policy number one, affirmation action. RTA's procurement policy one regarding the affirmation action assurance program has been updated to reflect changes in the procedures. RTA legal counsel Mr. Jonathan Hollingsworth has reviewed and concurred with these changes. Thank you. Now it's your fault. <laughs> City of Dayton Human Relations Council has always processed vendors' compliance with their affirmative action assurance and recently changed their procedures, which is revised, which revised now reflects the policy now reflects. Ms. Deborah Howard provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting, and the supporting information is included in today's board package. She is available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to revise procurement policy number one, affirmation action assurance. I'll second. Okay. 
It has been properly moved and second that we revise procurement policy number one, the affirmative action assurance. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor of the revision, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. The um, procurement policy number one, affirmative action, has been revised. Action item number eight, State of Ohio audit services fees. Under small purchasing procedures and purchase orders was issued to the treasurer, treasurer of the State of Ohio in the amount of 25000 for audit services. The audit services included a 2016 financial statement as well as an agreed upon procedures for the RTA 2016 National Transit Database report. The original purchase order was totaled at 25000 before the arrangement letters for the financial audit were received. The invoice is now total $29,900 and an additional $5,545 is needed to bring the total available funds to $30,545. Ms. Stanforth provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting. She's available now to answer any questions that the board may have. Hearing none, based upon the recommendation of the committee, I move to approve an additional $5,545 to the Treasurer of the State of Ohio for audit fees. It is also recommended that the $25,000 previously spent under small purchasing be ratified for a grand total award of $30,545. I'll second that. Okay. It's been properly moved and second that we approve the um, a total of $30,545 to go to the State of Ohio Audit for service fees. Are there any questions or comments? All those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed? Okay, motion carried. We have approved the total expenditure of $30,545 to the Treasurer of the State of Ohio for audit fees. Action item number nine, resolution number 2017-11-1, sales tax transitional aid. As of July 1st, 2017, the state of Ohio terminated sales tax on Medicaid health insuring corporations. In order to provide assistance to help counties and transit authorities manage through the loss of the sales tax, the Ohio State Executive Board contains transitional support, uh, a transitional support payment proposal. It consists of two components, a calculated replacement payment intended to cover the last quarter of the calendar year 2017 and a formula based payment intended to distribute transitional support above the amounts the state has determined reasonable for counties and transit authorities to absorb based on their reliance and the managed care sales tax. The Greater Dayton RTA expects to receive a total of $4,605,453 in transitional aid. Ms. Stanforth provided a detailed explanation at the committee meeting, and she's available now for any questions that the board might have. Hearing none, based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to approve resolution 2017-11-1, sales tax transitional aid in its final form after legal review. Okay. Second. Been promptly moved and seconded that we approve resolution number 2017 11-1, the Medicaid sales tax transition subfund. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. All those in favor of this uh, resolution, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. We have approved resolution 2017 11-1, the uh, Medicaid sales tax transition subfund. Action item number 10, board and committee meeting dates. As set forth in the Greater Dayton RTA bylaws, the board trustee meets, meeting dates occur on the first Tuesday of each month. The finance personnel and planning committee meeting dates typically occur on the third Tuesday of each month. Lastly, the investment advisory committee meets quarterly on the third Thursday during the months of January, April, July, and October. On an infrequent basis, it is necessary to change a regularly scheduled meeting date. Ms. Stanford provided a detailed explanation at our committee meeting. She's available to answer any questions the board may have at this time. And hearing none, based upon the recommendations of the committee, I move to approve the 2018 board and committee meeting dates as included in today's board package. Would you like to second it? 
second. It's been promptly moved and second that we approve the board and committee meeting dates for 2018. Any questions or comments? Um, all those in support of the motion say yes. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carried. We have approved the 2018 board and committee meeting dates. Do you have a report? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the July 2017 sales tax update at our meeting, Ms. Stanforth reported the July 2017 receipts totaled $3.03 million and are $410,000 lower than July of 2016. This equates to a 11.9% decrease. July 2017 is the first month where receipts did not include Medicaid, health, and insurance corporations tax, hereafter referred to as MCO. Um, in July 2016, MCO receipts totaled 331,000. July 2017, year-to-date receipts totaled 23.7 million and are $435,000 lower than year-to-date July 2016. This equates to a 1.8% decrease of the difference, 331,000 relates uh, to the elimination of MCO tax. After seven months, of sales tax receipts, we have budget, a budgeted shortfall of $1.49 million. RTA expects to receive about $4.6 million from the state of Ohio in MCO transitional aid. Approximately $2.3 million will be recorded as revenue in 2017 and will offset a large portion of the projected budget shortfall. The September 2017 financial statements. At our meeting, uh, Mr. Thomas reported that September 2017 RTA's net gain after local depreciation was $385,000 compared to a budgeted loss of $43,000. September 2017 year-to-date net loss after local depreciation is $605,000 compared to year-to-date budgeted loss of $2.3 million. The details associated with financial statements <clears throat> are included in the committee package. After nine months of operations, RTA realizes a $1.7 million positive variance as compared to budget. Mr. Hoagie commented that it would be very helpful to compare the 2017 to the actual 2016 results. This will provide a better comparison of operational changes between the years. Staff agreed and will incorporate this type of summary in all future financial reports. This has been included in today's board package, page 1A of the financial statements. The 2018 operating budget revenues, the planning discussion, Ms. Stanforth presented a preliminary 2018 operating budget revenue details. In summary, the 2018 preliminary revenues projection totals $66.4 million. Included in the 2018 projections are not sales tax, <clears throat> I'm sorry, are sales tax receipts of $38.5 million, which represents a 2% increase over 2017 projections, not including MCO receipts. The final proposed 2018 operating and capital budgets will be presented at the November 2017 committee meetings. Net pension liability update, 2017 year end audit planning. At the meeting, Mr. Thomas reported RTA's net pension liability will increase from 42.6 million at December 31, 2016 to 56.4 million at December 31st, 2017. This is based upon the OPERS, or the Ohio Public Employee Retirement System's most recently released actual, <coughs> actuarial study. This equates to a $13.8 million increase and will offset nearly all of RTA's unrestricted net assets. This is problematic and will likely result in significant changes to OPERS benefit structure and or employee and employee contribution levels. There will be more to bring forth as uh, to the committee on this topic. That concludes my report, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Lumpkin. Next, we have a report from the Planning Committee. Ms. Howard. Thank you. The Finance, Personnel, and Planning Committees met for a jointly held meeting on October 17th, and while we do not have any action items to bring before you, we do have important updates to provide. Mr. Policicchio provided a summary document of recent activities in the Customer and Business Development Department. Highlights from this month's report include information on the American Bus Benchmarking Group Annual Conference, which RTA hosted here in Dayton, the last update on the RTA Connect On Demand Program, and the annual RTA Safety Fair hosted 
at Wright Stop Plaza on October 16th. Mr. Palachikio gave a presentation to the committee on service reduction and fair changes proposals. These potential changes were announced to the public on October 13th, and the RTA will hold a public input sessions for customers and the community to collect feedback on the proposals on November 14th. He stated that staff will be on hand at these forums to answer any questions and to collect comments from the public. Mr. Palachikio also mentioned the kickoff of the latest RTA Connect program, the new shopping shuttles. This pilot program spearheaded by the Alternative Transit Solutions Group includes weekly group shuttle trips to a local grocery store with a goal of increasing access and accessibility. The first trip started in October, taking customers to the Kroger store on Siebenthaler Avenue. In addition, he shared that 2,140 festival goers at the Dayton Art Institute Oktoberfest rode to and from the event using RTA's free shuttle service. This is just one of many community events that RTA sponsors with its services on an annual basis. This concludes my report, Madam President, and I will be happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any questions for the report? Okay. Let's go on to the investment report. Mr. Williamson. Thank you, Madam President. The Investment Advisory Committee met on October 19th for an informative financial presentation from Raymond James and the Shearlow Investment Group. The Investment Advisory Committee is not bringing forth any action items today, but I have informational items to share. Mr. Fink and Mr. Shearlow began the discussion by referring to Raymond James Investment Strategy Committee's recap of economic growth, equity, and fixed income markets. Gross domestic product is expected to remain moderate in the range of 2 to 2.9 percent with inflation forecast at 1.5 percent for the next 6 to 12 months. Distortions due to the hurricanes may impact third quarter results but should rebound and bolster results in the fourth quarter. Equity strategy remained neutral to bullish based on the transition from an interest rate driven market to an earnings driven market. Intermediate to longer term bonds are expected to remain in the fairly tight trading range they have been since the beginning of this year, with a bias towards slightly lower rates. The case for lower rates relates to a number of factors, including low global inflation, demographics, increased participation in Treasury security auctions, moderate economic growth, and continued easing by foreign central banks. The shrinkage of the Federal Reserve's balance sheet was also discussed and is expected to put minimal upward pressure on rates over the next few years. The Fed grew its balance sheet through a series of large-scale asset purchases known as quantitative easing after the financial crisis began in 2008, and this continued through 2014. A study done by the Fed in April indicated that the term premium, or the extra yield demanded by investors for lending over a longer term, related to the asset purchases lowered rates on longer dated bonds by approximately 100 basis points. Given the gradual reduction in the Fed's balance sheet, its well-telegraphed process and the fact that a substantial amount of the funds used for the asset purchases remained in the form of excess reserves at banks, the expectation from several economists indicate that a 25 to 30 basis point increase in yields are likely over the next several years related to the Fed's balance sheet reduction. Mr. Shearlow also indicated a number of documents related to Fed actions as well as information concerning trends in wages. As there appears to be little upward pressure on wages, it is unlikely we will see a commensurate rise in inflation. As inflation measured by the personal consumption expenditure continues to remain below 2 percent, there is little incentive to dramatically raise rates in the near future. The key tactical emphasis for RTA's portfolio is that intermediate to longer term rates are expected to remain in a fairly tight trading range, while Fed funds and other short term rates have an upward bias 
leading to a continuing flattening of what's known as the yield curve. Mr. Hoagie raised possible concerns about a possible inversion of the yield curve and its related threat of a recession. While there has been a narrowing of the yield spread between longer dated and shorter dated securities, given synchronized global growth and central bank policy of using economic data to influence monetary policy rate decisions, a yield curve inversion and related recession does not appear imminent at this time. Uh, the discussion then turned to RTA's portfolio summary and a review of our investment portfolio based on data from October 2nd, 2017 indicates the face value of security holdings at $28.9 million with an effective maturity distribution of 2.6 years, a modified duration of 2.5 years, and a yield to worst call of 1.42% and yield to maturity of 1.46%. Since the date of the report, additional funds were added to the portfolio. While some of those purchases had not yet settled, interest income for calendar year 2017 it's presently estimated at $485,000. The Stanforth reported on our fuel hedging update and uh, informed the committee that fuel hedging realized losses totaled $187,000 and at September 30, 2017, unrealized losses equaled $65,000. Uh, RTA continues to unwind our fuel hedging activities. Uh, with regard to other business, Ms. Stanforth reported December 31, 2016 cash and cash equivalents totaling $42 million. As of September 30, cash and cash equivalents totaled $40 million. In 2018, staff is concerned about the timing of grant funding uh, because the federal budget for 2018 <coughs> currently delayed, as it has been delayed in recent years, it makes it difficult for staff to predict the timing of when grant funds from the federal government will be available. Staff is planning on a six or seven month delay with regard to the federal budget. Liquidity will be considered as we continue to make investments in the months to come. 2018 bus purchases, which we voted on today, will require over $2 million for local match in the monthly capitalized maintenance of $1.25 million. Given all of this, I requested that for the upcoming January meeting and thereafter, that we should include agenda items for both the sales tax and cash flow analysis. Sales tax will be a regular agenda item from this point forward. I'd be glad to answer any questions that the board may have. Other than that, Madam Chair, that concludes my report. Do we have any questions for the Investment Advisory Committee? Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Chief Executive Officer's report. Thank you, Madam President. Just a few informational items. Uh, we continue to work on the budget. Obviously, our biggest challenge, Dave just spent some time reviewing the issue of the loss of the MCO sales tax. As was stated earlier by John, we start to felt we began to feel that pain in the past month uh, with our first loss from uh, receipts from the month of July, uh, and then uh, we passed the resolution here regarding what the Kasich administration calls the transitional aid. And I found it interesting the the, the administration's terminology that they had developed a formula-based payment intended to distribute transitional support above the amounts the state has determined reasonable for counties and transit authorities to absorb. In other words, uh, they expect us to absorb a loss. Now, at the same time, uh, they negotiated a fix for the state's problem. They will get permanently a dollar and three cents for every dollar they would have lost. What we've been offered and the county's been offered across Ohio, all the RTAs in the counties, is roughly one year's worth of revenue to spread over infinity. Uh, and that's resulting in the problem and the challenges we're having uh, that were mentioned by Sharon and, and the fact that we're going to have to consider some adjustments to keep our budget in balance next year. So that's obviously something that we're working hard on. 
uh, and it's a tough, tough issue, but we've been working on this for two years, and so far this is the best we've been able to, to do, but we'll continue to fight that fight. Uh, also wanted to mention, we talked about this a little bit at the Joint Committee's meeting, but I think it's important in the public uh, eye to hear this, that you know, uh, we now have had a relationship with Marsh and its predecessor since late in 2006, and in the time period since we began that relationship, we've uh, saved probably slightly in excess of $5 million. And it's significant. The board took a lot of risk at that time. Uh, it was a different board, I guess, at that time, a totally different board. But Mary and I asked the board to take the risk and bail from the pool we were associated with and uh, let a local firm help us. And the relationship's been great. I'm glad Mark Reynolds is here to, to hear this, that we appreciate the relationship. It's been good for RTA. And it's been good for our customers because that, you know, a half a million dollars a year goes a long way in terms of what we need to operate the system. Very, very good thing. Also want to throw a rose towards Mr. Rosinski. Uh, he won't like it, but you know, the mention earlier that we were awarded some funds at the state level for 14 additional buses. Uh, you know, that's no, it's becoming no surprise to the board because Bob's been very great. This relationship that we have primarily as a result of Bob's work with ODOT uh, has come a long way. Uh, our award was second highest in the state of Ohio. We were within like $100,000 of what Cleveland got. Uh, and we've already been hearing from Columbus and Cincinnati that they're mad that every year Dayton gets more money than they do. But again, you know, this is a world of relationships and when you build good ones, that's it. So Bob's work should not go unnoticed. It's really important. I want to follow that up with another rose. I'm going to throw it at Mary and our finance team. We once again won the Auditor of State Award. Uh, for the umpteenth time, I lost track of how many times we've won it consecutively uh, because of the way we manage the business here, and our finance team has done a fantastic job at that. We're super thrilled. So that's good, good news. One last item, also good news. Yesterday, uh, we received the entrance of a new member to the RTA family, a young man named Benton Policicchio, uh, oh. arrived uh, late yesterday evening after an extensive labor, I understand. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's here, he looked great. I got texted a picture last night, mm -hmm. uh, and mom and Benton and, and I guess dad are doing well, and dad's gonna be off for a week or so. Uh, and I wished him luck with the changing of the diapers. I think it's wonderful that he's gonna begin to suffer like the rest of us. If there are no questions, that's all I have to report today. Mark, I, I do wanna go back a minute for the, the $4 million hole caused by the MCO thing, and there was a comment made before in somebody's report. There have been no decisions made about fare increases or route changes at this time. I know that I've been asked by some people out in the community uh, about that, but th there's no decisions made. In fact, we're still soliciting input from the community at this time. Is that right? Absolutely true. In fact, we've been fighting some of the misinformation. I've talk to people downstairs that uh, one have been given false information about what's even been proposed. Uh, no decisions have been made yet, not, not at all. And uh, I really encourage people to call us or talk to us even before the public input sessions uh, so that they get adequate, you know, we've heard everything from monthly and weekly passes have been eliminated to they're being doubled in price. And, uh, you know, I'm not sure of all the source of the false information. I'm a little bit aware of some of it. And it's disappointing to me. I mean, this, this is a challenging enough situation. Uh, so, you know, we hope that people do turn out and obviously voice their opinions. I was on the platform last night talking to some of the folks that work out at the base that would be affected by uh, some of the issues as well. But no, no decisions have been made yet. Any other items? Okay. Next we have old business. <clears throat> and I'm not aware of any old business we need to discuss at this time. Does any other board member have any? old business okay under new business we do have one item that is the greater Dayton RTA bylaws review miss Howard would you address that please yes I will as soon as I find that sheet I didn't know I was doing that I thought you were I got it. 
The Greater Dayton RTA bylaws section, section 7, paragraph A, amendment of bylaws state the following. Bylaws will be reviewed from time to time from amendment and repeal, but at minimum in each odd number calendar year by the Planning Committee with written recommendations for amendments and repeal taken to the Board of a Trustees for action at least 30 days prior to the Board action on the item. If approved by the Board of Trustees, the proposed bylaws will be submitted to the appointing jurisdictions. The amendments shall take effect unless one or more of the appointing jurisdictions act to is disapprove the amendments within 30 calendar days of notification. Nothing in this section prohibits the Board of Trustees from adopting, amending, or repealing any bylaw as frequently as prudent or necessary. The bylaws have been reviewed and no changes are necessary at this time. The Chief Executive Officer recommends no changes to the Greater Dayton RTA bylaws at this time. The bylaws effective June 2nd, 2015 will remain as currently stated. Um, we do, do we need to take an action on this? Okay. Um, is there a motion to accept the recommendation that no changes be made to the Greater Dayton RTA bylaws at this time? So moved. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay, it's been properly moved and second that no changes to the Great and Dayton RTA bylaws be made at this time. Are there any questions or comments? Okay. Would you call the roll? No, I'm sorry. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, no changes will be made to the Great and Dayton RTA bylaws at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Now we move on to public comment. I have received four requests for public comment. Please uh, remember the guidelines. When you are called, you will come to the podium. You will give us your name, your address. When uh, you complete that, you will have three minutes. You may speak on your behalf only. And when the uh, green light starts, three minutes. When it goes to yellow, you have 30 seconds. When it goes to red, please cease and be seated. The first one we have is Florence O'Brien. Oh, and if you're unable to come to the podium, we will bring a microphone to you. Okay. Name and address. All right, I've already told Mark I'm going to call you a bunch of Scrooges. Merry Christmas. Why can't you wait until after the first of the year? Name and address, and please speak on your behalf. Okay. I'm sorry. Name and address, oh, and speak on your behalf. Can't you wait until after the first of the year before you raise the ears? As, as you heard earlier during the meeting, no decision has been made on fares or routes. He's crude because I put it right here in okay. front of Mark. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Priscilla Smith. Yes, my name is Priscilla Smith. I live at 4103 Glenbrook Drive in Dayton. And I would like to know if you are boarding a bus, say for instance, on example, Salem Avenue, and you headed southbound, I want to know what, if any bus is approaching you, why can't they all stop and at least take you as far as Wright Stop Plaza? And then, for example, I was standing there the other day, and number 43 approached me. He looked at me like I was invisible and kept going. That's not very right or friendly. Um, were you at a stop that indicated it was for bus 43 at, at the, where you, the stop where you were standing was, was a, Stop for bus 43? It's it, the other bus. It's caught on my handlebar. That's their regular route. And he, he goes that way southbound. 
and I've had them to stop and take me as far as like Salem and Dean, no problem. But Southbound, none of them. Please speak into the microphone. Speak into the mic. Into the mic. So we start. Number uh, 40, say like I'm going northbound. They will stop and pick me up and take me like as far as Salem and Denlinger. I, I think what you have is a route issue, and I'll defer that to Mark to give it to the proper people to get back with you to answer your question. I think we'll get okay. the details. Sally can get the details before she leaves here tonight. Okay, Sally, would you raise your hand, please? So this young lady will get more information from you so we can address your issue. Okay. okay. Uh, next, Charlene Dawson. My name is Charlene Dawson. I live at 6045 North Main Street, uh, Dayton. I am a resident of Siena uh, Village over there. We are a senior complex. Um, as far as the fare rates that I've heard are going to go up, with my being on a very limited income, I cannot afford it. I've also heard that the tokens are going to be taken I use those religiously as someone who has lived in a Dayton area for more than 65 years. I have always rode RTA. Um, I have no problem with it, but I do have a problem with these rates going up. No transfers. I do this, like I said, religiously. I have always ridden the bus. I do not depend on family members. I am very independent. I go where I want to go, when I want to go, and I want RTA to be there. But I want you to be fair about it. I want you to be very fair. Like I said, this is a senior complex. A lot of us uh, still work over there. Um, we need that rate lowered. We, we can't, I can't do this. I, I can't pay this money. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. As we said, we've made no decisions yet on routes or fares, but we will take your comments into consideration. Thank you. Uh, Sandra May Smothers. And you did not indicate your topic. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, my name is Sandra May Smothers. I live at 6217 North Main in Harrison Township at Mercy of Seattle. And I'm here today to speak about project mobility. Y'all want to go up on the fares to four dollars? We barely can afford the three fifty. And I think it's outrageous if you go up on them fares and the way the seniors get treated. And that's wrong. And I think y'all know it because one day all of y'all up there gonna be seniors and y'all gonna have to fight with this situation. And also, uh, the buses that go to the base. Uh, you got people that have jobs out there that ride those buses, and that's very unfair to those vets. So I just want to let y'all know that it's not right. So y'all need to take under consideration, consider these vets that go to the base. That base run been on ever since I can remember when I was riding RTA, the bigger bus myself, when I was able to ride it. So that's all I got to say for now. <coughs> okay. Thank you, Ms. Mothers. That is... Uh completes the public comment. Uh, now we are down to board member comments and announcements, and I'll start down here with Mr. Williamson. I have nothing, uh, Madam President. Okay. I have nothing. I would like to welcome Belinda to the board. It's, Thank a, you. it's a pleasure to work with you. Uh, I know you're gonna be a valued board member, and uh, we, we look forward to helping you any way we can. Thank welcome you so aboard. much. Thank you. Thank you. And that's the only thing I'd have to say, too, is welcome aboard. Thank you. Ditto. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited to be here, and I will do all that I can to be a valued board member. And uh, I hope nobody parks in my parking space the next time <laughs> so that I can get here promptly. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to welcome you also, Belinda. Thank you. Ditto, too. Thank you. <laughs> 
Um, next on the agenda is an executive session. To my knowledge, we do not have a need for an executive session. Is there anything we need to discuss? Okay. Uh, number 14 on the agenda is recognition for Mr. Hank Trimble. If we don't deal with this agenda item, what? <laughs> hey, yeah, if we don't do that, he can. Hey, guys, the whole uh, MIS department's here to hack on an issue with my iPad. Can we get this uh, worked out while you're here? You wow. Uh, well, Mary and I are going to have a few comments, and I think uh, Mary would like to join me down front there. We'll, we'll do that. So, Hank, I love that suit. <laughs> Hank doesn't wear a lot of suits. I used to joke that uh, if Hank was wearing a tie, there was an action item for his department you know, that was gonna definitely happen in a meeting. So, 30 years, and uh, in all that time, if you can imagine how your technology has changed in the last 30 years. I was thinking back you know, in the 80s uh, when we were working then and how little technology we had uh, and I remember little, the little green blinking, you know, block on the top of the screen on my monitor, on, and we had this mini computer that was, man, it was half the size of this dais up here. But so fast forward to where we are today. Every single thing we do here, to me, is governed by some piece of IT equipment, and I don't think people realize the breadth and the depth of it. New buses have like nine, 10 onboard computers on them. The scheduling of the buses, the scheduling of the people who drive the buses, everything we do in finance, every bill we pay, everything we do, every part that goes on every bus. Actually, the machinery orders the parts. You know, we feed it a lot of information. All this GPS data, everything on our phones and on our tablets that happens, and I've been listening recently, you know, some of the investments that we've made in recent years, I hear supervisors at night on the street tracking buses from a, a vehicle they're in, which is something I never would have imagined, you know, in my time in the business. So every little thing, I can't even get in my office without an electronic, that's an inside joke, because I, I left my office one Friday night without my badge. It was laying on my desk, and it was a, I was supposed to see Sharon later that evening at an event. And she's like, where are you at? And I'm like, I had to find my way back in. So you can't even get in the building you know, without this electronic access. Every little thing we do is governed by these systems. And it's hard to imagine that this one guy, he's been here for really all of it. And it's, you know, the institutional knowledge is just incredible. And a while back, we, you know, I don't think people realize you know, when I have a question about something, it may be in operations, it could be in maintenance, Half the time, Hank's the guy that's answered my questions in the 12 years I've been here, because I know he understands the systems, you know, that are crunching and munching all this data. And in the last couple of years, we had a really big issue come up where there was a challenge to the way we pay bus drivers. And you would have thought our biggest witness would have been somebody in payroll, right? Absolutely not. It was that guy. And this was an arbitration that had we lost it, literally could have cost us millions of dollars. And Hank was our star witness because he understands how the system works and how all this goes. So, you know, I don't know if I can say enough about, and I can only imagine what you've seen, you know, in that time period and all that technology. I'm one of the end users, so I'm just like, you know, if it works, it's great. When it doesn't, I call 8321, you know, and say, what's going on here? I know I'm supposed to use the whatever that portal <laughs> is. I like to call Hank. Executive privilege, I guess, but I can only imagine, you know, what it's been like for you over all these years. And uh, at the same time, you know, I know you have a lot of outside interest. You're a very active guy, and I know you're going to be doing a lot of that in retirement. And uh, as much as we don't want you to go, uh, we want to wish you all the best in your future endeavors, uh, whether they're on a mountaintop somewhere, hiking, or whatever that might be. And before we get much further, I think Mary ought to come over here and say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. 
Next month, we're going to be bringing uh, the results of the cybersecurity uh, analysis, which is a very big project for Hank and his department. And um, I think you'll, that will also be a testament uh, to Hank's excellent work here at RTA because the findings are minimal. Um, and a few of the recommendations have already been uh, corrected, uh, if you will. Um, and knock on wood, we have not had any uh, cyber um, theft uh, under Hank's watch. So uh, just all of the excellent work Hank does, and he's been so, so easy to work with. He is uh, self-managed uh, completely. So I, other than that, I just wanted to lift up a couple of um, tidbits about Hank that you may or may not know. Uh, as Mark had indicated, he's an outdoorsman. So Hank, uh, over the last two or three years, he um, hiked the entire Appalachian Trail. Uh, he did various segments and he took uh, big chunks of vacation time, was it over two or three years, and he actually did the entire trail. So I think that is just um, amazing. He's a father and a grandfather. Um, he also volunteers for the park district. Um, gives a lot of his time uh, monitoring the various parks in town. Uh, that's what he does on the weekends. And also, annually, there's a big fundraiser where folks uh, rappel off of the tower, what used to be the Meath Tower. Um, Hank is one of the guys up there throwing the people off the ledge. <laughs> <laughs> he loves it. So um, he's very uh, skilled in, in just so many different things. He's an avid biker. He bikes to and from work. Um, he lives probably 20 miles uh, from RTA, uh, even in the rain and the snow sometimes. He's an avid volleyball player. He was um, on the Ohio Volleyball Associate, Association Governing Board. He was a tournament director. Uh, very, very involved. Volleyball has just uh, become so very popular uh, in Ohio, and I think Hank can attest to that, but he was a, a very big part of that. So um, those are some little things about Hank that you may or may uh, not know because he's a pretty private person. So um, just feel honored to have worked with you all these years, Hank, more than 22 years. One last thing about Hank, and I think this says a lot about who he is. I know the board's aware we've been working on succession issues because of all the gray hair here in our organization. And uh, one of the first projects we identified was Hank's retirement. Uh, and you know, it, it takes the right person to be willing to embrace the succession side of it to the degree Hank has. And uh, in the past several months, Hank actually came forward and said, it's time for Tim to take over. You know, and I and to me, you know, I, I would think most people would at least wait until the day of the retirement and all that. And he's like, no, no, this it's the time to do it. Uh, and obviously, his relationship with Tim is part of what helped us get Tim here. So we're going to have a smooth transition, and I can't say enough about that. So it makes my life and Mary's life a lot easier that you've been all in on all these issues, including your own replacement hack. I think that's fantastic. Uh, I don't think you could count the many ways Hank has touched this community uh, and this organization. You know, because all these systems have worked, we've been able to do what the rest of us do, get the buses out, get them maintained, uh, and even get them replaced. Everything's electronic on that end, too. And we do grants these days. It's all done electronically uh, in this world. So I could go on for hours, um, but I won't. I, we appreciate everything you've done. Uh, we hope that you know you'll stop by and see us once in a while we know you have a lot of plans for the next couple of years uh, but you will be sorely missed and uh, if you would like to we'd love to have you make some comments Hank. well thank you and uh, say for the last 30 years it's been a great ride we've been working with some great people um, really impressed on how this organization has changed over the years. It's for the better. Um, when Mary first came on board, I just, I've worked with some tremendous people, but the staff that's here now is some of the best uh, over my 30 years. I know I'm through that. Um, and the board, I don't have a whole lot of interaction, but I'm really impressed with the, the people we have on. It is uh, kind of a hard to leave uh, after all these years. Um, but after 30 years, it is time to leave for me. 
I have a lot of things going on. I'm still young to get involved. Uh, do have a lot of plans. I'm going to miss everybody, and uh, uh, just glad to say thank you to everybody. I appreciate all the comments and uh, look forward to it. And good luck in this organization. I think it's very good hands, and I look for this to be real uh, productive in the future. So thank you. Yes. 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 Opposed? Here we go. Meeting adjourned.